today I want to show you some of my favorite JavaScript features, and these are sort of secret features, if you will. Features that I don't see a lot of developers using, and that a lot of developers could actually save a lot of time if they did use them. So let me know which ones are your favorite, which ones you've seen before, and which ones are completely new to you. All right, so here we have an items array, and oftentimes in JavaScript, we want to be able to take our array and present it to the user in some readable way. And there's a lot of ways to do this, but there's one that I don't see many people doing and it's actually pretty useful and I think works very, very well. And that's going to be to use this international list format object. So we can create a new one of these list formatters, pass in a locale, in my case, English, and then this object with a style and a type. In this case, we're going to do long and conjunction, but I'll show you the other options in a moment. And then what we can do is we can log out the list formatter dot format function and pass in our array. So this items array. And what this is going to output is apples, bananas, and oranges. So you'll see we have comma separated values and the word and before the last value. And that is from the conjunction. But if we did instead disjunction and we ran this again, you'll see now it turns to an or. And if we simply did unit, then we would just get the comma separated list. But okay, let's go back to conjunction and we can also change the style. So if instead of long, we simply did short, then it changes to the ampersand here. And if we did narrow, then we're going to get nothing and we just have the comma separated list again. And while there are other ways to do this, I think this is the best way to do it, especially if you have multiple locales. So for example, if we go back to long and we change this to ES for Spanish, you'll see it does this in Spanish instead of English, which is very hard to do with custom code. A common thing we need to do with data is to group that data by something. We do this a lot in SQL with group by, but there's actually a way to do this in JavaScript as well. So here we have a people array. You can see it's got all of these different objects for different people, each with a role. And what we can do is we can do object.group by, pass in that people array, and then give it a function for how to actually group them. In this case, we do our person and get the person.role. And if we come down here and say console.log our by role, you'll see out here we get this object with admin and users. So if, for example, we did by role.admin, we are going to get a list of the different administrators, which is Alice and Kara, which we can see up here. And if instead we did by role dot user, then we are going to get the users, which is Bob and Dan. Now, of course, you can get this data by using a filtering method. However, if you do need the entirety of the data just separated into different chunks, then I think object group by is a great function to be using. How can you implement a function to check if JSON is actually valid? So for example, this is valid JSON and this is not. Well, there's actually a very simple way to do this in JavaScript and it's actually by using a try catch. So we're going to have a try block and a catch block. We don't even need the error from the catch. And all we're going to do in the try block is to take our JSON parameter here and we're simply going to see if we can parse it. So we're going to say json.parse and pass in our JSON. And this is actually going to throw an error if it does not get valid JSON. So if we make it below here, then we can simply say return true. Now, if we got into the catch block, that meant that we actually threw an error here. So what we can do is simply return false. And now if I run this, you'll see our valid JSON gives us true and our not JSON gives us false. Now, of course, there are some edge cases here that you might want to consider. So you might want to just look into what are the things that JSON parse is going to treat as valid JSON and not and decide if those are valid to you or not. And if they're not, then you can just add some if checks above for those specific circumstances. But for most circumstances, I think this works very well. In JavaScript, sometimes we have some URL and we need to actually get some data out of that URL, but it can be a little bit complicated. So how do we do this? Well, I think the easiest way is by using the new URL constructor function. So this is going to create a URL object for us. And now what we can do is we can actually get some data out of that URL in a much easier way. So for example, we can say console.log our URL dot, and we could do say the host name. And if I run this, you'll see we get example.com because that is the host name right here. And if we instead did the path name, what we are going to get is slash products. So that is this path that we have right here. And then what about these items over here at the end? Well, these are these search params. So we could say dot search params dot get. And for example, we could get our ID and that's going to be one, two, three, or we could get the reference, which is home page. We can also set these. So I could do something like 
url.searchparams.set and maybe we change the reference to be YouTube and then you'll see we now get YouTube as well as if we do url.toString you'll see we get this URL with the reference changed to YouTube. You might have heard of cross-site scripting before and it's an important thing to be preventing in JavaScript and here's one pretty interesting way we can do this. So here we have this sketchy username where it has a script tag in it and you could imagine that this has some code that's going to try to do something bad on our site and then we have a welcome message so an h1 this is welcome and then your username and if we just run this you can see the script tag gets added and if we added this to the page in html this would actually run which isn't good and one of the ways we can fix this is by taking this template literal which is the string that allows us to add variables in it and make it a tagged template literal in this case i'm going to add safe html now what is safe html well it's actually a function i wrote up here so what we can do is we can write these custom functions that take in these strings. So these are like this h1 welcome and then the stuff after it and the values, which are going to be the values we actually pass in here. And what we can do is reconstruct a string. So first of all, we have this escape function that takes in a string and it replaces in that string any of the values that could be HTML elements. So for example, we need to get rid of less than, greater than, and the ampersand. And then what we need to do is take all of our strings and reduce them, meaning bring them all back together into a single string. And while we are reducing them, all of the values we are going to escape and we're going to add those in. So then we will finally get this sort of completed string and we also trim it at the bottom. Now, if I run this again, you'll see we get this version that actually uses the escape characters. And you can use this for a variety of different things. It's not just for escaping HTML characters. Pretty much any time you want to have some custom way to work with a string, you can do that by using these tagged template literals. You might have seen this pattern before where you take a promise and you need to get the resolve and reject out of it. So you simply say resolve is going to be this resolve function and reject is going to be this reject function. And this does work, but there's actually a new way to do this in JavaScript that is much, much cleaner and built for this reason. So what we can do is we can simply say const, then we are going to destructure and we're going to get our promise our resolve function and our reject function. And we're going to get this from promise dot with resolvers. And we can run this as a function. And what it's going to do is return to us these values. And if I comment this out, you'll see it's not going to give us errors. This was simply because we had the same names twice, but this will do the exact same thing as this, just with far less code. And I think in a much more readable way. And now you might be thinking, OK, but what is actually the point of this? Well, let's comment this out. We can come down here and I can show you one example where this is pretty useful. So here is a wait function and we get a promise and resolve from promise dot with resolvers. And we're going to set a timeout for whatever amount of time. And then after that time, call resolve and then return the promise. And what this allows us to do is simply wait. So we can say wait, wait, and then a thousand milliseconds. And when I run this, you'll see it takes a thousand milliseconds before this actually shows up. And of course, it's not the only use case, but it's just one that is very simple and I think showcases what exactly you can do with promise.withresolvers. Formatting numbers in JavaScript can be kind of tricky, but there's a very easy way to do that by creating a new instance of this international number format object. So in this case, we call it format. We pass in our locale. For me, it's going to be English and then an object with some options. And I'll show these in a second. But you can see we console log formatter.format one, two, three, four, this bigger number and this bigger number. And you can see we get 1.2K, 987.7K and 123.5M for million, which just makes it a little bit easier to read. So this is the compact version. If we did the standard version, then it's simply going to add in commas. Now, interestingly enough, if we change the locale here, you'll see we use decimals based on what is standard in that locale. Now we can also change this to say scientific and it's going to use scientific notation as well as engineering is going to be very similar, but a slightly different notation for engineering. You can also change this maximum fraction digits. So for example, let's go back to compact. You can see here are the numbers we have. And if we change this to say two, you'll see we have more digits after the decimal place. So let me know which of these sort of secret JavaScript features were new to you and which ones you've used before and which ones you plan to use in the future. And then after you do that, you should watch this video next.